Calculations. When you start doing your rotations, uh, you're going to want to get your phone out and download one of those medical calculation apps. And there's a few that are going to be very helpful for you, especially when you're first starting out. I'm going to go over some of those important or more important calculations that you might need to do. The first one is the Centaur criteria for group A strep. This is actually a calculator to see if a strep test is required, not if a patient has strep, although it does give a slight likelihood of whether or not that patient does have strep. And that's going to include anterior cervical lymph nodes that are tender, uh, exudates on the tonsils, the age of the patient, whether or not they have a cough, the duration of symptoms, and fever. The next one you're going to want to pay attention to are the Ottawa ankle rules on whether or not an x-ray image is needed for an ankle. Ask four basic questions of the patient. First of all, were they able to bear weight after the injury? Do they have tenderness on the tibular fibular squeeze testing just above the malleoli? Is there pain at the fifth metatarsal or pain at the navicular bone? If any of those are positive, the Ottawa ankle rule calculator will suggest getting imaging performed. Next, the PCARN for pediatric head trauma over two years of age. This is going to be a set of questions that is going to determine whether a CT scan is necessary in this patient. Now, what if they're less than two? Well, they don't suggest using this calculator. Uh, but you can ask yourself a few questions like, is there a palpable head fracture? You're going to want to feel the entire cranium. Are they acting abnormal? It is a very sensitive calculator, so just one positive is going to recommend a CT head. There's the Nexus C-spine criteria for adults with trauma as to whether or not they need a head CT. And that calculator is also very sensitive, meaning that if they just have one of the criteria, it's going to suggest a CT head. There's the CURB-65, which will help you make a decision as to whether or not this patient in your ER with pneumonia needs to be admitted, or for that matter, this patient in the clinic with pneumonia needs to go to the ER. There's also now the Pneumonia Severity Index to guide the treatment of pneumonia. When a patient comes in with chest pain and they have no ST segment elevations on their EKG and you want to know what the likelihood of them having an anastemi is, you use the TIMI score, T-I-M-I. That's very important. Newborns get the APGAR score. Let's say you have a new patient with AFib, you're going to want to get the chads vast score, which tells you how important it may be to anticoagulate this patient, but also get the has bled score, which may tell you how likely the patient is to bleed on anticoagulation. You'll want to download the corrected sodium for a hyperglycemic patient. You're going to want to know the well scores available to you for the likelihood of a DVT. And then the modified well score is for the probability of a PE. There's lights criteria to determine whether a pleural effusion is exudative or transudative. Know that one. There's a meld and child PUG score, which will give you the prognosis and the severity in a liver disease patient. There's the Parkland formula to determine how much fluid resuscitation is needed in a burn patient. And the last one I have for you is Ranson's criteria for the risk of mortality in a pancreatitis patient.